it was always thought that two electrons repel because of some invisible ambiguous force field. Another theory, quantum mechanics, proved that empty space is actually made up of billions of virtual particles which pop into existence in pairs and then destroy each other. And so, that same idea was applied to electrons. Under this new theory, QED, electrons were thought to repel by firing virtual photons at each other. However, the math behind QED broke down because it was just too difficult. Richard Feynman simplified these calculations in a truly mind-blowing way by drawing diagrams. These are drawn on space and time, where time always moves. So, a stationary particle will trace a straight path and a moving particle will trace a tilted path. Drawing that same collision between electrons on space-time gives us a Feynman diagram. Each line you see represents a particle and also an equation. All the electrons have the same equation E and the photons P. These orange dots are vertexes, the junction between the real and virtual world, and it represents a constant J, which is equal to negative 0.1. Multiplying all of this gives you a main equation, and all this does is calculate the probability of particles moving to particular places in space time. So, each different Feynman diagram really depicts a unique equation built from the same building blocks. Let's say we want to calculate the probability that these two electrons here move to A and B. There are multiple ways for this to happen and that's why we have to draw all the possible diagrams and add all their probabilities together. The simplest diagram is straightforward with an easy equation but electrons can also move like this this or even this, there are thousands of more possibilities. What solves this endless problem is that constant j. It's a decimal number, so in diagrams where you multiply j twice, the whole equation gets multiplied by 0.01, making its probability small. And in diagrams with 4j's by 0.001, making its probability even smaller. The more j's there are, the less that diagram contributes to the total probability. That's why the simplest routes are more likely than the complex ones. It's similar to how you can take many routes to school, but you are more likely to take the shortest one there to save time. So, QED proves that even at the smallest level, nature behaves in the simplest and most elegant ways.